The hunt for Escobar reaches a peak in the last months of 1993. Despite the best intelligence and equipment that America could provide the Colombian authorities with, Escobar has been evading capture for 16 months. He was a past master at keeping hidden. My father had to invent you know, a lot of uh, security measures to maintain his safety. I remember my father saying to me every day, don't ever use a phone. If you touch your phone, you're dead. Phone is death. You have to know this, son. Throughout his career, Escobar used a variety of communications to keep his movements secret, some of them very creative. He used pigeons to, to communicate. Doesn't matter the place, you type the message and you send the pigeon and they will come. Escobar wasn't the first to use our feathered friends to send vital communications. In the First World War, the carrier pigeon Cher Ami was awarded a military medal for delivering a vital message at the Battle of Verdun, despite being shot through the breast and losing an eye and a leg. She is honored and stuffed in the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. Other animals have played vital roles during wartime. The U.S. military has even employed the help of aquatic animals to outsmart the enemy. In 1959, scientists in the Navy Marine Mammal Program found that dolphins were adept at delivering messages and identifying threats. In the Vietnam War, the dolphins were used to discourage enemy swimmers from attacking a key ammunition pier. More recently, in 2003, nine U.S. Navy dolphins identified mines in an Iraqi port on the Persian Gulf. That 2003 operation was the first case of marine animals clearing mines in a war zone. For sure, we owe a great debt to our fishy, furry, and feathered friends.